Hello, welcome. This is Exploring Battery Making with Craig. My new video series in which we will discuss making salt batteries with some new techniques. Starting from not knowing much in 2008, I'm thinking it can't be that hard. I uh, like to think that I've now acquired uh, some new techniques and sufficient knowledge to be very much worth sharing. The topics we're going to cover include uh, what's on the paper here. A, a few terms for battery making, battery, basic battery, electrolyte, and pH and metals, and uh, <coughs> Uh, separators, uh, positive electrode elements, negative electrode elements, and enclosures. So here's a few uh, battery terms I've uh, thought to mention. And the first one is plus and minus. Now, the, uh, this is Benjamin Franklin's fault because when he was first experimenting with electricity, he noticed there were two opposite charges and he just arbitrarily termed one as being negative and the other as positive opposites. Later, when electrons were discovered, they found that uh, a surplus of electrons made a negative charge, a deficit of electrons was a positive charge. So the more electrons you add to your bank account, the more negative it becomes. And the more you withdraw electrons from your bank account, the more positive it becomes. Don't you wish it worked that way? Okay, the next thing is anode versus cathode, and why I don't use those terms. So first I've drawn this, uh, just a diode, and it's uh, got uh, the negative on top because that's really the surplus of electrons. The electrons flow from the top to the bottom, from the negative to the positive. And uh, the source of electrons is called the cathode. And that's originally from the vacuum tube days when the cathode was heated up and emitted electrons into the vacuum in the vacuum tube. So what happened with batteries? Well, first they called the negative electrode the cathode. That made sense. It was the source of electrons. And then some bright person decided that in a rechargeable battery, uh, when you're recharging, the positive electrode is the source of electrons. The electrons are coming from there. Well, that's true if you're yanking out the electrons from the positive side, but uh, when you're using the battery, the negative side is the cathode. So the term cathode can apply to either the negative or the positive electrode. And somebody decided by a convention that they would use the po make the positive electrode the cathode. Unlike non-rechargeable batteries where the negative electrode is the cathode, and it gets so confusing that I completely avoid using the terms anode and cathode for batteries because they've been used both ways for both electrodes. So I tend to call them the posode or the negode or the positrode and the negatrode or just something that definitely identifies which electrode they really are. And another term is a redox. That's uh, reduction, oxidation, and those are the basic processes that go on inside a battery. Our reduction, they call it oxidation and reduction, and usually it's involving oxygen, and in a, in a battery it actually certainly is most with most batteries. So uh, when you're oxidizing something, you're adding oxygen, but you're also taking away electrons. And that's what the, the term really refers to is the uh, increase or decrease in electrons in a substance. So when you have uh, some zinc 
and it's supplying electrons to a circuit, it is being oxidized, which also means it's turning into zinc oxide, but the process actually means it's losing its electrons. So uh, somebody came up with the term uh, oil rig. Oxidation involves loss and uh, reduction involves gain of electrons. And now the next term that I want to introduce is called uh, Poor Bakes diagram, made by someone named Poor Bakes. And so I'll put one on the screen here. And uh, the so here's gold Poor Bakes. So when you as you change the pH of the substance, the voltages at which things happen change, and actually what happens changes. For example, in an acidic pH, you usually end up with uh, ions dissolved in the water. And as you get a more positive pH, you generally end up with solid oxides that don't dissolve. And that was the main intent of alkaline batteries was to have electrode substances that didn't dissolve into the uh, electrolyte. So, uh, well, that'll get on to our next topic. <laughs> okay, so we get into the basic battery, and the first thing we get into is electronic versus ion conduction. Now, electronic conduction is like within a metal, the electrons jump from place to place and flow through this metal. Ion conduction happens inside the liquid, the electrolyte, where the uh, ions in the electrolyte go from the positive, between the positive and negative terminals and uh, pick up and drop off electrons. And the, those are very important in, to separate in a battery. So the ideal electrode is a big short circuit for uh, electronic conduction. It's like a piece of metal, ideally. It's as good a conductor as you can get it with whatever chemicals you're using to have the chemical part of the battery. And uh, the, the electrolyte, on the other hand, there's a, a separator that is intended to entirely prevent any electronic connection between the positive electrode and the negative electrode, forcing electrons that want to move between them to go through the external circuit where we want to uh, have supply power to. So there's uh, various types of electrodes. There's, uh, you can have a metal electrode, you can have uh, Sintered electrode, powder paste electrode, or plated metal on the current collector. And uh, so that's that. So uh, the uh, energy storage. Energy storage is volts times amps times amp hours. So the number of amps you can supply for an hour, or the number of hours for which you can supply an amp is the uh, current capacity. And uh, the current capacity times the voltage is the uh, watt hours of actual energy that the battery can hold. And that uh, current capacity is, uh, yeah, you can rate current, oh, current capacity rather than Rather than charge capacity, this is the amount of current you can have. Uh, there's uh, short circuit current, uh, short term um, surge current, and continuous. These are different ratings that uh, a battery may be capable of producing. Also, I should uh, mention that the uh, highest amp hours is is not necessary, and the highest voltage, the highest voltage doesn't mean the highest energy storage unless it's also the highest amp hours. You can have an electrode that's a higher voltage but it actually is 
has less amp hours and therefore less energy storage. Okay, then we get to into uh, electrolytes, pH, and metals. And uh, first one's a bit redundant uh, metal uh, compounds versus pH, and that gets us back into the uh, uh, per bakes diagrams of uh, the oxide, whether a metal forms an oxide or dissolves in at the different pHs. And then there's the concept of pH buffering. Now, if you want to have a specific pH inside your battery, you say, well, these two substances will work best at pH 10, say, uh, instead of pH 14 or pH 7 or 5, where they'll dissolve. And how do you attain that? The, a pH buffer has uh, one substance that will is a base and another substance that's an acid that will together uh, tend to uh, limit the range of the pH. And we're going to talk specifically about what I do in the batteries. The first one is I use calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, and that has a pH of about uh, 12 to 13. And but it's very insoluble. You can only dissolve about two grams of calcium hydroxide in uh, 100 grams of water. And so, if it was more soluble, it would reach pH 14. But it doesn't. It uh, has this natural uh, pH that it hits for the amount that dissolves. And then, uh, potassium chloride salt. Now that's my main electrolyte salt. It's uh, actually edible, so it's uh, in good. Uh, it's one of the things I'm trying to attain here is batteries that aren't dangerous to handle and that aren't environmentally dangerous. So uh, the, the, that's that's the main part of the electrolyte that does the transferring, and it's a, a, a neutral pH unless it's uh, quite concentrated, in which case it becomes slightly acidic. And the final uh, ingredient in my electrolytes is uh, copper chloride salt. And copper chloride salt is somewhat acidic. So you, here you can get the pH buffer because you have the, the calcium hydroxide trying to maintain a pH of 12.7. And the more copper chloride you add to the electrolyte, the more acidic, the less strong the basic is in the electrolyte. So you can attain a pH of 12, 11, 10, 9, whatever suits the uh, materials in your electrodes. And there's one other important subject, and it's what you can use for a current collector. Now, in the uh, negative electrode, it's quite simple. Uh, generally, you use copper. And because the negative electrode is held at a negative voltage, the copper is held at its, in its metallic state, and it never becomes an oxide. Uh, whereas, in the positive electrode, if you try and use a uh, piece of copper, or copper or mesh or grill for a uh, current collector to uh, that, that all the electrode substance connects to to connect up to the terminal of the battery, that current collector will dissolve, generally speaking, in, a, in either a salt or a totally alkaline uh, environment not to mention acidic, even more, <laughs> if it's positively charged. So if you have uh, nickel hydroxide at plus half a volt, that's an oxide, hydroxide, and copper oxide forms at just over zero volts, so, so your entire copper current collector just uh, disintegrates into oxide, copper oxide. Now, uh, <coughs> Uh, Jungner found that in 
pH 14 alkaline solution, nickel, and only nickel among any uh, commonly available metal, would not dissolve. And the reason for that is it's like aluminum. It in pH 14, it forms like a, a one, one molecule thick layer of nickel oxide on its surface and then the rest of it doesn't uh, oxidize. So what can we do for a salt battery? Because the nickel will oxidize in a salt solution. And uh, the general um, method of dealing with that is to use uh, graphite or carbon. And that's why in a standard D cell, not the alkaline one, but in a standard one, there's a carbon rod for the positive current collector coming up to the top of the cell where the button is. So that's pretty much, I think, held back all battery development except for pH 14 alkaline. As soon as people discovered they could use a methyl there, everybody went there and it doesn't matter what the chemistries are, or what's optimum, what uh, elements or, or metals you can use instead in a, a lower pH solution, because pH 14 was where it was at, because you could make a good metal current collector instead of having to use graphite or carbon. And uh, thus, uh, lower pH cells like uh, 12, 11, 10, are very little explored. Uh, but I found that uh, a mixture, cupronickel, so I use cupronickel 7030, uh, doesn't dissolve in salt electrolyte. It, uh, it pits pretty badly and the surface becomes rough, but in general the uh, current collector metal itself stays intact. And doesn't uh, dis disintegrate into a uh, messy oxide powder. So that's been very helpful uh, in being able to formulate all kinds of uh, lower pH cells that uh, can mod use modified chemistries to achieve other results than what people get in pH 14. Okay, so uh, what goes into the battery? First of all, it's in an enclosure. Sounds uh, obvious enough. The considerations for the enclosure are that it has to exclude air because the air will uh, discharge your electrodes, especially if it's uh, some higher voltage electrode like zinc in a salty electrolyte. And You've got to keep the uh, electrodes compacted. If it's, a, if it's a powder electrode and it's allowed to expand, then the conductivity will be lost and you have uh, very poor current capacity and very poor, poor uh, storage capacity. So a sort of a uh, typical uh, cell that you might see is, is a cylindrical cell. And the reason for that is because you can pack the powders in there and they aren't able to go anywhere. And a metal can keeps the air out. Um, but they're hard to make at home. And then we have uh, flat cells, which is what I prefer for trying to make something at home. And I'm, uh, I've started 3D printing them because you can put all kinds of fancy little things in there like a, a water reservoir above the top and uh, some holes for the gas to bubble through and uh, a little uh, frame to set the separator sheet on and uh, the front pieces. And so we have in, in my cells you typically have a flat electrode like zinc down here with a copper mesh current collector coming out to this terminal and then the separator sheet and then uh, a powder electrode with the 
cupronickel terminal typically coming out this slot. A couple of places to put in water, electrolyte. And so the, the trouble with that kind of cell is that the powders will bulge out and then you won't get the conductivity anymore because they, they've uh, decompacted. So what I prefer to do is uh, clamp the cell between two aluminum plates and uh, screw the plates together. And that would seem horrendously impractical for a plate A cell, but you can stack a whole bunch of cells in series and have your 12 volt or 24 volt battery all between uh, two loom plates with uh, long screws or, or ready rod. Next we get to the electrode separator. The electrode separator obviously has to keep electrons from flowing between the two electrodes and that forces them to go to the external circuit where you want to draw the power off. And in my cells, the powdered electrodes have to be, uh, they aren't glued together with uh, the sort of things that other battery makers glue them. Instead, they're left just as a powder and uh, they uh, have those nano powders can seep through the separator sheet. So your separator sheet has to be able to stop that. And then with a zinc electrode, your separator sheet has to be able to stop the zinc ions that form during discharge from going through the separator sheet and getting to the positive electrode where they will reform with dendrites growing through the separator sheet until the cell is shorted out. And I use uh, watercolor paper for my uh, separator sheets, or I've used deer skin. Um, and uh, then there's uh, two special treatments. The first one is I soak the separator sheet in toluene twice and then let it dry. And I'm not quite sure why, but that stops the nanopowders from penetrating the separator sheet. So they can't get through and short to the negative electrode. And then I paint the uh, separator sheet with a mixture of uh, sodium dodecyl benzene sulfonate in water and that seems to prevent the zinc ions from going through or in penetrating the separator sheet. It's a 150 year old problem and it's the reason that you don't see for example nickel zinc batteries around because uh, they have a, tend to have a very short cycle life before the zinc has Throwing its tendrils in and shorted to the other cell, to the other electrode. So, with uh, those things accomplished, the cells should last forever. Now, electrode materials. Uh, obviously, these are the chemical materials that get oxidized and reduced as the battery charges and discharges. So for the positive electrodes, I'll be discussing and probably demonstrating nickel, which means nickel oxyhydroxide, discharging to nickel hydroxide, and manganese oxide, which, uh, which only seems to discharge and won't recharge. Uh, otherwise, it would probably be better than nickel. And then there's nickel manganese oxides or nickel manganates. Um, those I have some good hopes for, but I need to uh, do a bit more experimenting with. And there's also other potential substances like uh, copper and cobalt, 
and uh, silver has been used, it'll actually discharge in a positive electrode to metal. Now for negative electrodes, I'm probably only going to discuss two of them. Uh, one is uh, zinc metal, uh, that is it starts as metal and discharges to zinc oxide, and uh, manganese metal, which uh, starts as manganese, metallic manganese powder, and discharges to manganese hydroxide. Both of those reactions move a lot of electrons. Uh, zinc is uh, well known for having tons of energy. Manganese is a uh, lower atomic weight and uh, a higher voltage. So, yeah, like around minus 1.5 volts instead of minus 1.15. So your cell is a higher voltage. That doesn't necessarily mean that you can make it work better than zinc, but I have uh, made manganese metallic electrodes. They don't work at pH 14, but I, with a couple of hydrogen over voltage raising additives, I've got them to work at uh, lower pHs, like 12. So that's, uh, that's the introduction. If you think this is worth pursuing, give me a like and maybe I'll make more. Finish the series.